What's the worst smell that you've ever experienced? My dog once managed to get a jar of horseradish open. He ate the entire contents. Describing the smell of his farts crap would never come close to the reality. I sit next to this girl in two of my classes, and she always has deadly breath. What's worse is she never sleeps enough, so she is constantly tired and therefore yawns all the time. Every time I hear her yawn all I can do is brace myself for the eye-watering pungent odor that's going to hit me in a few seconds. Not the worst smell, but perpetually terrible and there's nothing I feel comfortable doing about it. And before you guys suggest offering gum, I've done that a few times and she never takes it. A bed saw roughly the size of a basketball, absolutely putrid. Close second is about 150 pounds of goat cheese that sat in a dumpster in 90 degree heat for a good week and a half. After Hurricane Katrina, I went with a relief group to clear homes. This meant taking everything out, trashing it, and tearing the house down to the studs. We went in July the year after, and the house we had was owned by a former catering business owner. He had three industrial sized freezers in the garage that had been flooded and baking for nearly a year. We couldn't get into the garage through the house, and had to break down the garage door. The smell that came from that place was enough to make everyone in our group literally vomit. Grown men doubling over even before the door was down. The freezers had been full of beef and pork, then turned into a soup with flood waters, then boiled in 100 plus degree temps for a year. Two stroke 10 would not smell again. I used to work at an animal hospital. One early morning after taking my coat off a co-worker pulls me aside and says, Hey, I need your help with something outside. Right away I knew it was bad. The only thing we keep outside are hoses. Pooper scoopers in the freezer. The freezer is where we keep recently dead euthanized pets before they are taken by a pet cemetery service. They come every Tuesday to empty the freezer. It's Tuesday. Outside the driver of the removal truck is smiling nervously in front of the padlocked freezer. Something reeks. It wasn't so bad. We pop it open and witness one of the few spectacles that I might never forget. The freezer light which is designed to turn off when the door closes has malfunctioned. It has remained lit for days. Not only burning the plastic body bags containing the carcasses but also burning large amounts of fur and cooking some flesh. It was the most putrid and outright dizzyingly disgusting odor I've ever come across. The combination of burnt, rotting flesh, singed fur, and melted plastic created a potpourri of the most vile stenches known to man. My disgust is plastered on my face as I stare into the frozen stink tub. I look up at the truck driver and he grins, chuckling. That'll wake you up in the morning. Maybe not the worst ever but the most powerful was taking one step into the leather factory in Fez, Morocco. When he opens the door the smell almost knocks you out and you wonder how are all those people actually working in there. I went to recycle the aluminum cans from my grandfather's bar. The entire shed behind the bar was full. 50-60 garbage bags, full of cans. Must have been 5-6 months worth. It was the end of summer, so the bags had been there through the heat of summer. The smell of moldy beer, baking in the summer heat, with basically zero ventilation, was easily one of the foulest smells I've ever encountered. That was 10 years ago and I still remember how putrid the stench was. Anyone who owns a bar has probably dealt with this at some point. The worst part was probably dripping beer juice on my hands arms. It took everything I had not to vomit continuously, through the entirety of the day. But I know he appreciated it, so I suppose it was worth it. I cooked a big butt leg of beef for our 30th birthday. I was 45 kilograms of age goodness that I spit roasted over a charcoal fire. The party was in the woods and once everyone had eaten their fill, we put the remaining half a leg into the back of my cousin's van to stop foxes getting at it. I was so hungover that I totally forgot about it until mid-afternoon the next day. It had been festering in there at a perfect 30-40 C all day and was turning green. Very much like me when I opened the door. A large amount of rotten meat is quite hard to get rid of as it is classed as toxic waste so I had to chop it up and bury it in various places. I hurled several times and ran a fairly good chance of getting arrested on suspicion of murder. Not sure if it was the worst smell or the worst state I have been in smelling something bad. A decomposing dead body. When my husband and I were living in our first apartment there was an older guy who lived across the hall from us. He was a recluse, 
In the 5 years we live there we maybe saw him 3 times. Turns out he was very sick. He had pancreatic cancer which we found out when people would come knocking at his door at 2am to buy his pain pills off of him. He didn't have any family or friends and just seemed to lead a solitary life. The building didn't have individually controlled heat so the super decided when the heat was turned on off. On this particular day the heat came on full force and the hallway began to smell. At first we thought maybe someone had lodged something in the garbage chute. But the smell continued to get worse and worse and began to creep into our apartment. My husband thought that maybe the old guy across the hall had left his fridge open accidentally and left for the week or something. So we called the building super. He knocked and eventually unlocked the door went into the unit across the hall. The super came out and I've never seen a face go as white as I did then. He told us the guy was dead. And by dead I mean he was in bed decomposing. The police and crime scene units were called and from what we were told they basically had to scoop him into a body bag he was that far gone. They estimate that he had been dead 2-4 weeks. He had the window open a crack in a Canadian winter, albeit mild for Ottawa, so the time of death could have been off by a bit. Had the heat not come on and pushed the air out from under the door who knows how long it would have taken for someone to have found him. In the end they cleaned up and the smell left, but no one ever came to collect his things and they ended up throwing everything away. Obviously the things contaminated were dealt with by the crime scene crew. I always found it sad that no one really cared that he had passed. We didn't even know his name. When our toilet was being fixed they offered us use of the, still, vacant unit across the hall. I politely declined. The bottom, backside, underside, adjoining sewer drain of a dumpster at the fast food joint I used to work at. We had corporate coming in for an inspection and my boss thought of the most asinine places to clean up. Places they would never look or even think about. One of those places, underneath the dumpster. You know, just in case Bruce Banner was on the inspection team and decided to lift the dumpster for a quick peek. He assigned an assistant manager, myself, and two other guys to the task. We had to come in at 4.45am on Saturday, when the garbage company came by, to ask them to leave the dumpster out of the bay so we could pressure wash and scrub it clean. Shoulder seen the look on that guy's face. Something akin to why you sure you want to do that and you poor bastards. They pulled out the dumpster and just, I can't describe. There was a drain underneath which helped, sort of. It was just years of caked up food and animal waste, several dead rats and other animals, and some live ones which scurried off. We couldn't pressure wash it. We had to get shovels and just start picking up and dumping it, well into the dumpster. Where else? After about an hour and a half of shoveling, raking, and scrubbing it was clear enough of thick layers that pressure washing actually did something. Not even the longest or dirtiest day of my working life, but definitely the smelliest. I worked in my dad's company, and one of the things we would do regularly was to clean and empty grease traps. We got to a Chinese restaurant where there was this grease trap in the basement that hadn't been emptied for 8 months. Couple that with the fact that there was 30 degrees down there. Worst smell I've ever encountered. I don't think I've ever been so sick because of a smell before. Went to Alaska. We were driving from Anchorage somewhere down the Kenai Peninsula and saw a dead grey whale washed up. So we decided to stop for a picture. Mother of God. That thing stank like heck from 100 yards away and only got worse as we got closer. I don't remember the smell being that different from a normal rotting animal. Just much much stronger. Nobody can blame their farts on my dog. It didn't wake me from a deep sleep. Give me suicidal urges. And force me out of the house for half an hour. Definitely not a dog fart. The smoldering ruins of the World Trade Center after 9-11. One windy night, the smell drifted up to the Bronx and I started choking and had to shut all of my windows. No wonder a lot of first responders there got cancer. A slightly opened can of cat food that I forgot about. I spent days looking for a dead animal in my house. Convinced my cats had dragged one in. But then I found the can. The tab had broken off but I was still able to get in. And it sat for about a week. It was so bad I threw up 3 times, washed my hands 6 times, couldn't get the smell on my fingers off, and I only touched the outside can for about 5 seconds. It was the smell of straight up rotted flesh and death in a can. Worse than a staph infection or an open septic tank. Rotted wet cat food, never again. Onion decaying inside with worms. 
So, I didn't realize, but I cut an onion and almost fainted. It was all empty from inside with worms and a putrid smell which is worse than a fresh crap taken by a man who ate a decomposing skunk. I smelled it 4 years ago and thinking about it still makes me want to throw up. I once found an old can of fish oil or something whilst cleaning out the garage. My olfactory nerves held a union meeting and went on strike until it was agreed that opening old fricked up things and smelling it was no longer in the negotiated contract. It was New Year's Eve, 2003. I was on my way to Leeds to spend the night with some friends. First at a house party then to a club. I got a lift to my local train station, basically a platform in a small village. To get the train through to the city, I was smoking a cigarette and sending text messages while waiting for the train to arrive. It was a cold night, the air was still and bitter on the face. I heard voices approaching, loud and brash. It was a young, overweight couple who obviously lived nearby. As they got closer I began to sense it. It got stronger and stronger as they got within meters of where I stood, and I realized what it was. The female counterpart of the gentleman now also lighting up his own cigarette had clearly neglected her own personal, feminine hygiene for quite some time. Through her jeans and the cold winter air, I could smell what can only be described as rancid, rotting, impure vag smeg, a stench so foul and gut-wrenching I was caught in shock. My eyes began to water and I had to stop myself from gipping as I turned away in disgust. Her poor lady parts were clearly suffering from the most awful affliction of cursed cheese drip, bodily waste, biohazardous disease known to man. It haunts me to this day. For any other tobacco chewers, you'll understand. Have a spitter at work, half full on a Friday, go home for a 3 day weekend, forgetting to dump it, the following Tuesday, OMG. Used differential fluid. The fact that I am always the first one to post this in these threads tells me that nobody on Reddit has ever experienced changing the oil in the rear differential on a RWD vehicle themselves. I passed out at the doctors and as I woke up, they brought the smelling salts to my nose. It's like waking up before your alarm, but your alarm still goes off. We had some hot dogs with us in a thermos on a hike once. There were a few left over, which we forgot all about. Months later we find this thermos in a backpack, and oh boy, that was some putrid stuff, I'm telling you. I even tried cleaning the thermos, after pouring out the chunky, slimy mess and rinsing it several times, but it was absolutely done for. Bye. Thermos. My brother asked me to come over to him. He then proceeded with to fart onto his hand and then cup his hand over my mouth and nose. It was so bad I threw up and was crying. Left a tiny bit of milk in the bottom of a small milk. Opened it one day since I was bored. My room smelt really bad for a few weeks. When my GF had the vet evacuate our dog's anal glands in a very small visiting room. That smell is unlike any fart. It is a smell that comes from inside a living being. Oh, I know. When I was in 8th grade, we had a home living class, where we had to take care of a fake baby. Except I went to a small school, so we couldn't afford the nice robotic babies. We had eggs. We had to take care of these eggs for a week. If we brought back the same egg in good shape one week later, we received a 100. These eggs had to be at school every day too. My buddy, on the very first day we received our eggs put it in its crib, which was a Nike shoe box. He then drops the whole thing in the parking lot. Smashed egg. He fakes another egg and paints it the exact same. But, like an idiot, he just put the cracked egg in the little blankets at the bottom of the shoe box. Cut to one week later. We all turn in our shoe box with our eggs and his box already smells rancid with the lid closed. I watched the teacher open that box and saw her let out the heaviest dry gag that I've ever seen. I mean, her face was red and she had tears in her eyes. I got to smell that box after class and to this day it's the worst thing I've ever smelled. So when I was in 5th grade, my school still did a pajama day. On the bus ride to school, some little kid had brought a duck stuffed animal. And that thing smelled like rotten eggs sulfur. Just about everyone on the bus almost vomited that day. One night my sister came back at night from a wedding absolutely pee drunk. I walked her to her bed and she fell asleep almost immediately. Worried as I was for how drunk she was. I checked on her a few minutes later to find a massive puddle of vomit on the bed and floor. 
I grabbed an old rag and proceeded to clean up when I was hit by the stench of whatever unholy combination of food and alcohol my sister mixed at that wedding. I had to leave the room immediately or add to the vomit with some of my own. I managed to end up cleaning the thing, but had to hold my breath for the whole duration. Nastiest smell I've ever smelled. I used to work for a Porter John company, and the pump trucks were the absolute worst. They pump the air out from the inside of the tank to create a vacuum. This is how the truck sucks out Porter John's and septic tanks. The air that gets pumped out is completely saturated with the smell of rotting crap. It's unbelievable. I left my used protein shaker in the car overnight one summer, opened it the next afternoon without thinking and dry heaved immediately. The smell of Stitch's belch on the Stitch's Great Escape ride at Disney World. Crap you not I could not get that smell out of my nose for the rest of the day. 12M hydrochloric acid. The AP chemistry teacher warned us that the scent was so powerful it could bring a grown man to his knee so we were to waft, not sniff. I took a huge whiff and it was as if someone instantaneously rammed a large needle into the bottom of my brain and my eyes watered like someone punched me in the face. It's like concentrated wasabi. <laughs> Having to complete a necropsy on a dead sea turtle that washed up several days prior. I threw up twice assisting my boss. He threw up once, as we cut into the turtle to determine cause of death. At 17 during college I worked as a cleaner in the evenings in an office unit. Well the guys there were so lazy that they wouldn't keep the bin liners in the bin and would pour half empty coffee cups into the bin. These would sit in the bin in a hot office inside a huge factory all day long and I'd have to empty said bins every evening. I was on holiday for a week and when I went back to work I had to do the usual and came into these offices and apparently the person who was covering my shifts wasn't emptying the bins. I pulled the disgusting liner out and the smell made my eyes water. Old sour milky coffee and whatever other crap they'd thrown in those bins. Working as a ground crewman in a cemetery, the smell that came out of the ground when digging graves after while it was raining is indescribable. You learn real quick that your brain is hardwired to recognize the smell of your own species death and doesn't want you to be there. If you are wondering why the rain makes it bad, when it rains, all the water seeps into the ground, through the decaying bodies and then pools in the deepest area, the hole being dug for the new casket. So, when you are digging or having to install the lowering mechanism, it's just terrible. Walking home from school with the guys. Back in 2002 probably, there had been this dead coon on the side of the road for a few days. This particular afternoon Eric decides to kick it. While well, stirring up the odors of that roadkill was a terrible idea. Never smelled anything that bad before or since. Putrid turkey eggs. My buddy in elementary school had a couple of deranged turkeys that wandered his property. I stumbled onto a few eggs that had been left to bake in the sun for probably a week or so. The smell was so sudden and overwhelming that I immediately threw up the lunch I had just eaten. Second week as a cop. A profession I've long abandoned. We had a missing person about 3 weeks old, and got a call that a car matching the description of the MP was found by a local rancher. It was August, and the temps average high 90s low 100s. I got to about 75 yards from the car and could smell it. Seriously, to this day I can close my eyes, think about, and still smell the putrefaction coming from that body. I promptly went back to town and grabbed a Scott pack from the fire department, and it didn't help. I tossed everything I was wearing except for the gun belt in case I couldn't wash the smell out. A beaker of ammonia. I was trying to check if it was acetone or ammonia. You do that crap once during your career and never again. Worked on the front desk in a asylum seeker council boodling. Someone else bought an obviously homeless guy. I was 20 feet away and the stench of him hit me like a wall. The acrid urine and body odor made my eyes water. From 20 feet, I nearly puked. The poor worker had to take him into a small private room to interview them. How the frick they did this without passing out is beyond me. Ever heard of Ooblek? Cornstarch mixed with water makes a really fun to play with semi-liquid. It's hard if you punch it but it runs like a liquid. Anyway, don't leave it in a closed container for a weekend. It's a mix of rotten cheese, the worst athlete's foot you can have, and death. I was biking on a country road once and I passed by a truck that was distributing fertilizer onto the crops. I was still smelling the reek of cow crap for days afterwards. 
When they cut open a body that's been rotting in a river for a two weeks. My mother used to work for the county coroner as a forensic scientist and I went to work with her because I was curious. Let's just say working with dead bodies was quickly removed from my list of jobs. About 3 years ago I was employed at a certain chicken based restaurant. They had pulled one of the chicken freezers out of storage after it had been sitting for 3 years. Someone had left a pan full of raw chicken inside the freezer before putting it in storage. Needless to say the smell was horrendous. Only time I have ever vomited from scent alone. I was also the one who had to clean it out. Fast food employment was a dark time in my life. I ate 3 fiber 1 bars once before an engineering class. Cleared out the room. Everyone ran to the fabrication shop in the back. Freshman year. Someone puked on my neighbor's heater. It got into the grill and all the nooks and crannies. He decided to mask it with axe deodorant spray. He opened his door and that stank permeated into the hall and through everyone's closed doors. All you could hear that night was people dry heaving in the toilets. Sophomore year someone thought it would be funny to microwave human fesses in the common room microwave oven. Even that didn't smell as putrid as the heated up puke with axe. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.